St. Lucia is closest it has ever been to securing a medal at the Olympic Games and it is likely to come from the sport of high jumping. There are two opportunities for medaling through two female high jumpers, Levin Spencer and Janelle Shaper. Levin has been involved for ages and basically has paved the way for an exciting Janelle Shaper who undoubtedly represents the future. She too has an excellent shot at making the podium. But tonight we will feature those closest to Laverne and those coaches who work with her in the initial years in St. Lucia and those who have prepared her for her global competition. Our focus is all on Laverne Spencer tonight. This is Calabash Community and our focus tonight shifts the spotlight on the community of Kako in Babano, where Laverne Spencer was born and still lives when she is here. Interestingly, she got her introduction to sport through a church and a sporty family. Her older sister, Elizabeth, was also a high jumper. And so she starts our conversation tonight on what inspired Laverne in those initial years. I used to be a high jumper, you know. <laughs> in my time at Compre, I, I, I did high jump. Actually, I had the record for a very short time. But, you know, I always thought sports was not my thing. The way we were raised, I think if you into the parties and whatever, you would be sidetracked. But Levin was, we raised in a Christian home, it's mostly church, home, school. Occasionally we'll go to an outing or something. My Levin's elder sister, Lisbeth, I coached at, at um, com conference school and her brother as well. He always said me, Lubin, I have one for you, right? And it was Levin. Could it be that you were the inspiration for that? Um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> because I quit too early, probably. After I left Sarafa, I just finished with all that. But I'm sure she heard that you were involved. Well, yes, yes. Everybody in my family at some point in time was involved in sports. My brother was into football and athletics as well. So you find the, motiv the sporting uh, motivation was always in the family. Levin came and her demeanor, her, the way she put herself, like, yeah, always been to learn, following the drills properly. Um, her movements, her right, her tenacity more or less, her patience, her ability more or less. And she, was, she listened very well. It was basically um, school, the field, home, and a church. Unlike some of our younger ones today that they while you may you may tell them we practice in Monday, Wednesday and Thursday that you come to the field on the first day and don't see them. But when you when you're going home, you're seeing them walking around town. So the 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 level of commitment she had, um some of our student athletes today don't have that 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 that, that, that commitment. Well, I saw Lovell in Antipo when Mr. Gregory Lubin came, came with her on the field, you know. And she used to run. She used to do one and two and long jump, you know. And, and, and long jump, sorry, and high jump. So when I saw her, I saw she didn't have that talented, all right? She didn't have that talented, but she was a hard worker. Okay? And from there, I know that hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. From her, I learned that little slogan. Levin and I are always in a competition, you know. <laughs> she always she could beat me in, in sprinting. And my idea is coaches never, never lose, all right? So all I was trying to beat me. Oh, uh, she couldn't. Once, she beat me once, you know, once. Okay? But from that, Never again. In one of the events, she actually beat somebody we thought was the most um, successful person at the time. And she was only, I think she was 12 years. And the person was probably like 16, 17. And we were like, oh my God, that cannot be possible. And from then we realized she has it in her. It wasn't high jump at the time. It was athletics. It was running. But I guess with time, other things developed and she went into high jump. Was she into other sport? Was she playing uh, football, cricket, anything else? I like, guess skipping. What, what what physical thing was she involved with? We were forced to go into other sports, and then we noticed like, oh, we have the ability to do certain things in some different sports as well. 
So yeah, she did play volleyball, she did play netball and cricket. Do you remember that uh, this, that discussion at all as to why high jump? Because I'm sure in St. Lucia's, uh, we, did, we have done high jump, but I'm not sure many St. Lucia's, many St. Lucia's youth are thinking of high jump. Yeah, I think it's because one, her, her height, I'm, uh, nobody's not as tall as, as persons may think. She, she's very skinny, so she appears tall. So I, I guess in form too, at, at age 14, she, she looked skinny, she looked tall. She was a very good sprinter, but uh, Mr. Lubin at the time, uh, especially his high jump coach, um, he just looked at her and thought that she, she looked very athletic as well, you know, so maybe she could do well with the high jump. And, you know, he encouraged her to get into it. She did that and uh, it didn't take him too long to realize that, um, uh, well, maybe that, that was a better spot for her because um, within a year she had broken St. national record. For a young person like Laverne making that decision, um, didn't you think I probably might get more glory if I focus more on this one than I jump? Yeah, the, the thing is, whilst Laverne went in St. Lucia prior to her departure to the U.S. Um, uh, for school schooling reasons she still did the sprints while she did high jump she was still in fact when she left St. Lucia, she was still the, the fastest on island at the time in the 100 meters and 200 meters but the the change was made when she got to the university of georgia her coach at the time um wayne norton he saw her going all the way in high jump so he encouraged her to just give up the sprints completely you know and, and just focus on high jump and I guess maybe it was the best. Um, it was a good decision because it would have been tough, you know, to, to run the hundred meters, two hundred meters, and, and then you have to do the high jump as well, you know. So the decision maybe to to just uh, put the sprints on the back burner uh, paid off in the end because it really helped her to be where she's right now in, in high jump. As far as you know, which one she enjoyed the most in terms of whether the distance running or the um, high jump? Yeah, the sprints. Most definitely. You, you, you ask her and, and even now she talks about maybe in her, in her last days um, doing a few races, you know. Um, of course, she, she has had a lot more success in, in, in the high jump. It has made her world class. So, so um, she has no choice but to, to continue. I mean, that, that's what she does for a living right now as a professional high jumper. But she talks about uh, her running days all the time. She talks about the possibility of, of running all the time. She talks about the fact that she, she looks at girls who specialize in the sprints and she thinks that she could probably still be them if she continues to train, you know. But uh, she's with the high jump, but I think the sprints would, would be her first choice, you know, if she really had a choice. I tell her, then go fight. It's unique to St. Lucia. Not many people you find into the field events on the world scene for St. Lucia. So if that's where your strength is, then you go fight. With her potential, right? And, uh, and the work she has put in her training. But she always trained serious. Before that, she could, uh, she could uh, make it in high jump, right? But I don't know if it was so far, okay? But at least, you know, for the, for the region, yes. But she saw us, she proved that, she, she reached further. Well, everybody found it strange that uh, the uh, height and size would have um, preferred, uh, the preference would have been one of the jumps where there's a long jump or high jump. But at the time, well, Mr. Lewin had her doing everything because Lewin did the one, she did the two, she did the discus, she did the long jump and the high jump at uh, these at um, Antripo, just more to the end. He recognized he, he can get more out of her from the long, the high jump and then he didn't allow her to compete quite a bit in the one and the two anymore as well as discus and he focused more on the, the high jump but he kept the the sprints just to ensure that she could keep up her one her fitness and her speed she was very strong because I used to run it for her and she used to have me on my toes at all times. She's very powerful, don't mind her size, right? She's very strong and powerful. I usually mold my athletes, my athletes after one international athlete. I must have uh, uh, Mirad Levin against Quintero from Cuba. Same height, same demeanor, we're always cool. So from that time, I think that kind of got me hooked. And then everybody would tell her, Oh, remember you have training tomorrow, remember, you know? So we motivated her as much as we can. We reminded her, we encouraged her to continue. I guess when you have the family supporting things, you will go forward. With her mind and what she up to, I always, always, I'm sure of that. I'm not, I'm not talking just by talking from my heart. Always know that Leuven will make it. This is Calabash Community, and tonight we are talking about Leuven Spencer who is for the third time representing St. Lucia at the Olympics. We are hearing from the people closest to her. Our story will continue.